Hey guys, Dan with Mavermatic, and I was looking at which of my blog posts over at Mavermatic is, is the most popular, and the one titled, How to Wire an Ethernet and Phone Jack Using a Single Cat 5E Cable. And what made me create this um, post was, when I was building my house, I had the foresight to put in enough wiring at every location. This is actually in our laundry room. And you can see here I've got two Cat5e and a phone jack and then two RG6. So the idea here is that you could have um, an internal network, an external network, uh, you know, whatever, basically two Cat5 cables, a phone, because I've got a Panasonic phone system that's used for intercom. And then if it's satellite or cable, um, nowadays, you probably don't really need the coax since we're going all digital, but again, it was just to have all the cables in here. So I got emails from people that when they bought their house that their builder only ran a single Cat5 cable, which is a problem in today's day and age. So if you still have a phone jack or would like to have a phone system, you still need to have four conductor or two pair because most phone systems rely on the other pair to carry the, the caller ID, date, time, all that information that is still required to have four conductors. And then your Cat5 cable really only needs four conductors as well. So if you want to have the full gigabit, then you need eight conductors or four pair, which makes up a standard Cat5 cable. So I'm gonna show you guys how you could take a single Cat5 cable, so basically one of these. So let's say you just have a single cable like this. Obviously, it won't be terminated. How you can take that and convert it into a single Cat5, that would be a 100 megabit rated and a phone jack. So let's get right into it. Let me take this off first so you guys can see here. This is a screwless plate. So let's get into this. Excuse my reach here. And anytime that you're doing anything like this, you just want to be careful not to mess around with the high voltage. So this obviously is, we're here in the United States, so that's 110 volts, 120 volts. So just be careful when you're playing around with cabling that you don't end up touching the high voltage side to get a shock. Anyways, this is a Leviton screwless plate. So it has this little frame around it that we're gonna pop off here in a second. Okay, now let's take the connection out here. I also ran fiber when I pulled all the cabling. My house has, in most locations, two Cat5 cables and two RG6, as well as two fiber. And you can see the fiber is tucked away and the way fiber works is you have a transmit and receive. I haven't lit the fiber up just because I don't really need it, but it's there for the future. So what we're gonna be doing today is, you can see this cable is a single Cat5 cable, and this is the Cat5, and this is the telephone. And you'll see here what we've done is we've spliced out the orange and the green, and that's punched down. And for the telephone, we've taken the brown and the blue. So the brown and the blue for the telephone. And so now let's actually show you how this all works out. So if we take a look at a standard phone jack, you'll notice that the typical traditional color is black 
red, green, and yellow. And that's basically connected with the black. If you're looking at the front of it, the black is on the left with the yellow on the right. And just so you guys know, the tip in the ring or line one are the two center ones and then line two are the two outer ones. So like I said, if you just had a two line phone or a single line phone, what you would do is typically you just have the green and the red. And then if you have like a fax line, you usually do the yellow and the black. But because I have a Panasonic phone system, I require all of them. And it's also good, good practice to wire up all the cables um, for, you know, just in the future, you never know if you're gonna have line one, line two, or a phone system. So that brings in this kind of patch bay. So this is a Leviton, you might have one of these, it's just a category five patch bay. But the nice thing is you can actually use these for telephones. So if you see it, it actually pops in and you can use this as a patch bay in, in your wiring closet or you know if you have a Leviton whole house or there's many different brands but it all depends on which one you have. So if you have one of these in your wiring closet you can basically use a Cat5 and convert it to a RJ11, which is what is used for telephone. Okay, so if you look at that now, you can see that for category five cables, so let's pop this back out. So if I were plugging this in, category 5 cable in port number 1 like this you would see that I would wire up the orange and the green to that port and the reason why we do that is because those are the connectors that we're going to be using for the T568A standard in terms of wiring there's an A and a B standard and that's what it is when you look at the side of a category five cable. Um, it'll typically say that it's wired in a T568A or T568B. And also if you look at the side of a category five jack, you'll notice that it has the two color codes and that's all dependent on the wiring standard. As long as you stay consistent, that's all that matters. You just don't wanna mix a, a home that has, or an office, uh, with the two different standards. You just want to stick to one. I've chosen 568A in my house and just make sure you stick with one or the other. So A or B. Now once you stick with that one, then it makes everything very easy. So you'll notice here that we've got the green and the orange wired up. So then when you plug in your patch cables and you were connecting this to a switch and then this side would go to your wall, Let's switch over here to the wall view. So this is where I'm talking about you've got the two different wiring. So you'll see there's a B and an A. I don't know if you can see that pretty well. And I've chosen the A. So you can see if I pop off the cover, you can see the wiring. goes to the 568A, which means that the green solid, green stripe are on this side. You have an orange stripe right above that. And then you have the orange with the orange. Pretty simple. So what you're going to want to have is a punch down tool. I've got a link below to this one on Amazon. I've had this for probably 10 years now. It's amazing. You're going to want to have one. It comes with two ends. One is just a punch down and the other side has a cutter on it as well, which is what you're going to want for this one. You can kind of see there's a, 
a little blade or a little cutter so when you punch in it pushes the bit in and then also trims that little bit right there. So it's pretty simple. Uh, like I said, all you really have to do is pull out the orange and the green, wire it up to the 568A color, if that's what you've chosen. And once you're done punching it down, you grab the little cover. And you're done with that one, which leaves you the other side. And in our case, because we're not using the 568A standard, you're left with the blue and white and the brown and white. And this one is a little bit more, um, it might throw you off a little bit because we've chosen the blue and white with the brown and white, it doesn't really match up. And what I mean by that is if you look at one of these RJ11 jacks, and these you can find, they're also called uh, telephone jacks. Um, so if, if you find these, these come on the top side, they actually don't have a 568A, they don't really conform to any standard, but you'll notice that we're gonna be using the top one which has or actually the bottom one that has the, the orange. So the orange in our case is the brown. So you're gonna go brown and white, which you can see right there. The other side where it's orange is gonna be our brown. And then you follow the blue, solid blue and stripe blue. So the blue one is, is gonna match. The brown is actually gonna be orange on the connector and brown as the wire. But once you do that, you're gonna be all set. So once we have that all completed, if you have one of these types of jacks, you just put it back in. I've chosen to put my telephone down below. And then the shared Cat5 cable, put that right here. And then we just gotta put everything back in. Just be careful, because you don't wanna derate the cabling. Um, it, it's, you have to have it be twisted pair. It's like that for a reason. So then you just put this back in, reverse it. Okay, let me just pop the cover back up. There you have it. That's how you wire up a Cat5 cable shared with a telephone RJ11. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below and I'll answer those. But also check out Mavermatic.com where we've got a bunch of how-tos and tips. And let us know if there's any other videos that you want clarified. I hope this actually helped you guys out. Until next time.